So I have an, Im uh, an interesting imagery that came in for you when I was shuffling. Um, so I don't know which character in this uh, snippet movie reel that you are, okay? I don't know if you're the man or the woman, but um, I'll just relay the, the image. So I see this man, he's wearing like a black leather um, jacket, a white t-shirt, and you know, he looks like one of those um, 1980s type of a guy, um, quite attractive, popular possibly. He walked by this um, hat store and he looks through the um, the the window pane the the front display case in the window pane and he sees this really really attractive woman she's trying on some hats so he goes inside the store and he kind of uh, inches near her area and um, she's like you know very preoccupied with whatever she's doing and so he sees a, a few novelty hats so he First, he puts on like um, one of those raccoon hunters hat, the raccoon hat with the, the raccoon tail, I guess. And then he, he kind of like, you know, shimmies past her. And she she's so preoccupied with what she's doing, she doesn't notice him. And then he's like, OK, let me try that again. And then he puts on like a, a peacock looking hat and he walks past her and she doesn't notice him. So he keeps doing this like five, six times because this woman's really pretty and he just really wants her to look up to him, smile, and then he can strike up a conversation. But she's so preoccupied with whatever she's doing that she doesn't notice him. And then he puts all the hats away and he was just like, oh, I'm wasting my time. Um, I'm just gonna, you know, um, go somewhere else. And then he puts all the hats away, he walks past her, and she notices him, and she looks and she smiles at him. And then it, it cuts off, okay? So I don't know if he talks to her, but I think that's his kind of like his cue to talk to her, to strike up a conversation, possibly ask her out. So what I was really confused about is, I don't know if you're the man or if you're the woman, but I feel like the energies might be playing out for different areas of your life. So first of all, let's talk about the obvious. I feel like there is somebody here whose attention you're trying to get, okay? And the thing is, Scorpios, you guys are very real. Like, you guys are just, like, you know, very authentic. You either love me or, you know, or you don't, and I'm okay with that. I'm going to continue to be me. I don't have to change myself to please anybody. And I especially, I'm not going to put on airs to impress anybody. That's just the way that you are. And I feel that energy coming through very strongly for you. So... As a result of that, I feel like it might be the other person who is trying really hard to get you to notice them, okay? They're trying on different hats. They're trying on different strategies. They're trying on different ways of getting you to notice them. They're trying to kind of like fit the mold. They're trying to change themselves. They're, they're trying really, really hard to make that connection with you. Okay, to be the person, to be to be like the embodiment of all the people in your life. So I feel like you might be dealing with someone who's a social chameleon, which might not be a, a, a good thing, mainly because you guys are very real and you want a partner that is most Scorpio people. Um, Scorpios are, you guys are very intense and, um, you might hear that all the time and you're just like, what exactly does that mean? It basically means that when someone is really intense, the type of situations, people, and especially love relationship partners that they're naturally very inclined to be pulled towards or very attracted to are people that also have a lot of intensity, okay? Like attract like. And what that means is that you want someone who's very strong, okay? Emotionally, very strong. And I feel in some circumstances, physically even, very, very strong. And that is also why you guys are also very obsessed with, um, you know, um, working out, uh, not only to get yourself, you know, in, in good shape physically, because you want to look a certain way, but also because you're health conscious and also you understand the need to be strong, the need to, you know, uh, flex your muscles, the need to kind of like um, 
tone your body and the need to get yourself in top shape, okay? And what I'm sensing here is you need somebody who's very, very strong. And in order for a person to be very emotionally strong, they have to have gone through a lot of... Um, a lot of like changes in their lives in order for them to know who they are. So you're not dealing with, you know, you're, you're not interested in dealing with a social chameleon that blends in with whoever it is that they're with, that blends in with their environment, that, you know, kind of um, slithers around without a true sense of self. You need somebody who's very, very self-assured. You need somebody that, you know, that you know in and out and you know that at the end of the day, I know who I can depend on and I, I have to feel like I know this person 100% and I have to trust this person 100%. And so when, you're, when you have those types of requirement in a person, in a friend, in a family member, in a love relationship partner, you're not going to settle for somebody who is, you know, um, who... A tr who changes their demeanor or changes the way that they act or change the way that they behave just to get your attention. And honestly, you guys have really strong intuition as well. If let's say if you're in an environment and somebody's around you and they keep hovering around you, you're going to notice it. So I, I feel like you're dealing with someone who's doing a lot of attention seeking wanting to get your attention. They're trying many different ways, many different methods in order to get you to notice them, in order to engage with you, and they might not know how. For others of you, this could even be just a child, a child that needs attention, a child that that wants the warmth and the, the, the uh, communication or even the recognition. And you might be distracted with a gazillion things, okay? And then when the other person, you know, is like exasperated and they give up, and that's when you're just like, okay, I notice you. What do you want now? So I feel like that's the case for many of you. And then I'm also seeing uh, a few of you. You might be, you know, a little bit more on, I would say, younger end of the age spectrum. If you're watching this, where you have somebody that you like and you don't know this person very well. And you're trying to, you know, you're trying to decide, like, um, and, and the thing is, you know, we all have our judgments. We are, all have our assumptions and our preconceived notions when we first meet a person. You feel like this person is one way, and so you approach them from that angle. And then through, you know, a little bit of conversation, you realize that you've got them pegged the wrong way and so you have to change your strategy in dealing with that person so for example um you feel like somebody who's very high maintenance okay so let's say you like somebody and the way that they look their hair is always perfect their clothes are always you know top-notch quality um they're very made up they might have a lot of makeup on them if you're dating women if you're dating men they might be very clean shaven their hair looks nice all the time they wear clothes that are form-fitting they just look really good and so you're just like you, you've got this person pegged like that person must be very high maintenance they're really attracted they're really attractive i'm very attracted to them let me go you know talk to them and then you talk to them and you find out that they, you know, work for a bunch of charities, that they that they don't really care about the material things. They just have to look a certain way because of their job. And then it kind of like debunks all your preconceived notions of this person. And so I, I feel like you've got somebody here that you're trying really, really hard to please. You think they're one way, but they're another way. And I feel like just the bottom line is we have to go into this month very open-minded uh, with the possibility or with accepting the possibility that there are very, I guess, many, many, many facets to a situation or to a person. And so because people are very complex and multifaceted, it would be best to come into a situation with a clean slate to start over without preconceived notions, without prejudices, without any type of assumptions, and then see where things go.
okay? And the important thing is, you don't have to, you know, pretend to be anything that you're not, mainly because it's not you, it's not real, it's not authentic. It's, if you do that, I feel like by the end of the day, you're just like worn out and tired and you're just like, I can't believe I was playing charades, you know, the whole time. Or I can't believe I was putting up an act for that long just to impress that person. It can feel very, very just mentally and physically very draining to put on an act, okay? And then I also feel like, you know, at the end of the day, they're going to notice you. So it doesn't really matter, okay? Just be your authentic self. Um, so what is coming through for you? I can't believe I spent 10 minutes on that. So what's coming through for you for the energies that's coming in for this month? First of all, what I have here is the justice card and the justice card deals with adjustments. Adjusting the areas in our lives in order to balance them out. Okay. Adjusting our needs and wants adjusting the, the way in which we are looking at a situation and I also feel like adjusting recalibrating our expectations when it comes to the emotional relationships family love and friendships and kind of um, learning to compartmentalize but I also feel like balancing the fine lines okay so what I mean by that we have here the Page of Cups. And the Page of Cups can indicate a friendship, a burgeoning friendship, or somebody that you are, you know, very interested in. You're trying to, like, get to know. And then if things, if you guys hit it off, then you wouldn't mind dating this person. So I definitely feel there's a lot of um, messages about moderation, about adjusting our expectations, as well as adjusting ourselves in order to fit the other person. But the person that you're dealing with, what I have here is an air sign. This is the Knight of Swords in this deck. This is the Thoth deck. So it doesn't have the King of Swords. And the Knight of Swords then is the King of Swords in this deck. I know it's very confusing. So this is the King of Swords, Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra. This is somebody that charges in very, very fast. They're very no-nonsense. They can see through the BS. They can see through the facade. And they're going to be pointing that out. And so I feel like when you're dealing with this person, they're, they're more interested in the, um, the, the objective reality. They're not really interested in the muddiness when it comes to the emotional state. I feel like they are not one to speak from the heart. Not that they're evasive, but I, I just feel like the topics, the things that you're going to be discussing, and the energies that are kind of like uh, the, the commingling energy between the two of you needs to be calibrated and it needs to be adjusted. So it's sort of like meeting somebody where they're at and at the same time being like um, flexible enough to move at their pace, to quicken your pace, to adjust to this person, to quicken your mind, to adjust to this person's energy, okay? Um, for some of you, this could be like a, a boss, a supervisor, or somebody that you're working in very, very close proximity with. And this is somebody that's going to be shooting you with a lot of, you know, oh, I want you to do this. And they throw you like five things at a time. And you're just like, wait a minute. I don't even know how to do the first thing. When is all of this due? And so I see this element about you needing to quicken up the pace. If not, then this person might not know your limitations. Okay. So there's definitely a situation here where somebody is bringing in a different way of seeing a situation, but at the same time, their energy is so kinetic that they might leave you feeling like this, stuck and very, very uncomfortable. So their expectations or the way they're seeing you is one way. 
the way you're seeing them is one way. And I feel like a conversation needs to be reached between the two of you in order to reach some type of a compromise. Okay. Um, in terms of relationships and other things, um, the bottom four cards um, this deals with a relationship partner or it deals with somebody that you're interested in or somebody you might be in a, you know, relationship with like a, a, a spouse, a marriage partner, a girlfriend, boyfriend, or whatever it is. So it's like your love sector. Um, there's a little bit of conflict I feel brewing here. Okay. I have here the five of wands, um, which can indicate two things. The Five of Wands is a card about, you know, friendly competition. Um, it's sort of like the, emo um, the, 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 the fun and the excitement and also the, the mental rapport between you and an another person. It could indicate like teasing. It could indicate this, you know, banter back and forth. Um, so altogether, it's a little bit like playful. Um, but with the Five of Wands, I usually think of it as a situation where Somebody has a lot of suitors, okay? There's like competition. There are people who might be, if you're not in a relationship with this person and, and you're dealing with someone then who has a lot of suitors and I feel like you might be amongst one of the suitors, okay? And as a result of it, you're trying on many, many hats. You're trying on many, many um, scenarios in order to get this person to notice you. So they, they've got quite a few suitors um, in their environment. I also feel like you're, if you're in a relationship, your partner might be dealing with um, this situation where they're not able to fully um, balance out their work life and their personal life. I see somebody who is really, really, really busy I also feel somebody who really loves you. There's this um, really beautiful energy about them. They're passionate about you. Five of Wands. They really care about you. We have here the Temperance card. This is somebody who will, you know, wine and dine you. They like to have you to themselves. They like to cook for you. They like to, they might not be the best cook. You might be eating whatever it is that they're cooking. And you might be, you know, um, f feeding the dogs you know, some of the scraps on your plate rather than eating them. They might not be the best cook, but I feel like they put in the effort, they care, and they really want you to, you know, thrive. So I feel like it's somebody who's uh, very loving, very caring, but they are going through some things in their lives where they have a very limited amount of time. They're kind of stressed out, I feel. Emotionally, they're a little bit up and down. And I also feel like this lack of balance between their personal life and their work life. I also have the devil, which denotes to me another person, okay? Possibly a Capricorn. So I have here Sagittarius and Capricorn, two clear signs. Sagittarius, Capricorn. Um, and with this Capricorn energy, this is, um, you know, it, it indicates like somebody who is um, emotionally a little bit depressed or emotionally very, very up and down, okay? And the Capricorn card, the devil, toxic energy, it's linked up here with the moon. There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of questions. There are a lot of things that they want to ask you. There might also be geographical distance between the two of you. And then I also see a situation where this person might be as well, you know, emotionally very up and down. They're not able to they're not really able to find a healthy emotional balance in their life, okay? If you are dealing with a partner who is, you know, you, you, you feel like they're stressed out, definitely try to, I, I don't feel like I even need to tell you guys this. You guys are very, very considerate. But I feel like you're dealing with a partner who is very perfectionistic. They want to... It's like they don't know how to ask for help or they take it upon themselves to take care of everything. And um, in the past, they might have been, you know, totally capable of taking care of everything. But I also feel like they might have had more responsibilities in the work front. And so they're not able to, you know, keep things afloat as they as well as they used to be, as well as they used to. And 
they're not aware of this themselves. And so they're kind of running themselves ragged, trying to take care of everything. Um, cooking, cleaning, putting the kids to bed. Um, on top of managing, you know, school even for some of them and work life. And so I feel like, you know, they're, they're running on a lot less sleep and they're not aware that they need help. And so because they're not aware that they need help, they might seem like the Superman or the Superwoman in your life. And so I want you to take a little bit more time to look at this person and see if there are signs that they're a little bit stressed out and try to take the burden, um, try to alleviate the burden from them, you know, um, offering to cook, offering to clean, offering to give them a, a massage, telling them to, you know, why don't you just go to bed early or why don't we just uh, spend this weekend, you know, ordering out or, you know, let me take you out or whatever it is in order to help this person. Because I feel like they're not aware that they're stressed out, okay? If they were aware and if they asked you, of course you would help, but this person is not aware. And so they're taking on a lot of responsibilities and I feel like there's there's tremendous amount of passion and chemistry here. If you're dealing with a fire sign, okay? So Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo, but I feel a very strong Sagittarian vibe. And then I have somebody here who is a, a Capricorn, possibly, um, Capricorn Pisces type of a mixture and I, I, I feel like this person might be very emotionally very up and down trying to get your attention uh, trying to draw you in okay um, so your advice in general here for this month um, Scorpios what I have here is the ten of swords which indicate yeah ten of swords which indicates the end of a cycle as well as the king of cups so the King of Cups, I feel like this is a situation where it's telling you to come to your senses and come to your own sense of awareness. When a situation is no longer good for us, we want to be able to shift gears and move away from it, okay? Rather than feeding our energy, our emotional resources, Emotional resources are, are limited, okay, into a dead-end type of a situation, okay? And especially if we're dealing with somebody offering assistance, if we're dealing with someone who might be going through some uh, tough times in their lives, especially if it's a relationship partner, you want to make sure that you try your best to kind of accommodate that person, okay? They will not ask for it. They might not even be aware that they need assistance. But I feel like it's, it's time to kind of use your, um, use your power of perception to be able to sense that, wait a minute, energetically, something seems off in the household. Maybe my partner needs help. Maybe I'm feeling, you know, their stress or I'm picking up their distress signals that they're not aware of so that you can step in and intervene and help a situation get better. Okay.